read on. It says, God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. So a reminder here, God, Paul's reminding them, God is faithful. He is a faithful God. He will never leave you or forsake you. Even when you're not faithful, he remains faithful. When we question him, when we fail him, he does not fail us. The song, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. So God is worthy of trust because he is faithful. The next part of the verse tells us how. How is God faithful? He's faithful because he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. Interesting, right? Beyond your ability. This is where the saying must come from, I'm assuming. When they say that God will not give you more than you can handle, they're basing it right there because it says beyond your ability. So what is, this, what is this saying? Is this saying that our ability and our strength and our own ability and strength that we can overcome temptation and tests? Do you think that's what Paul's saying here? Is he saying that we're strong enough to handle it? That don't whine. Don't complain. You got it. You can take care of this. Is that what he's saying? No, I don't think it is. And you'll see that as we read on in the verse, but I want to I look at 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 9 to make a point here as well. So we're answering the question, does God ever give us more than we can handle? Well, let's look at one of Paul's experiences. It says, for we, this is Paul speaking, for we did, do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction that we experienced in Asia, for we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Does that sound like someone that's experiencing something that more they can handle? I would say so. I mean, he says they despaired of life. They were thinking that it would be better to die than to live with this affliction that he's talking about. Despaired of life. Paul is clearly saying that it was beyond our strength. He couldn't handle it. He didn't have the ability. And then in verse 9, it says, Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. They thought, this is it. I'm done. I'm toast. Can't handle this anymore. They felt like they were going to die, and if they weren't going to die, they were probably hoping they would. They were burdened beyond what they could bear, beyond their ability. Have you been there? Has something overtaken you that you feel completely hopeless? Either a temptation or a situation that you've gotten yourself into and you feel like there is no possible way out of this. I can't get out of this. It's going to crush me. If you're in the midst of one of those times right now and you're thinking, why in the world is God allowing this? I mean, doesn't he love me? Has he left me? What's happening? Why is this happening to me? Why is he allowing this? If he's not causing it, if he's not giving us this temptation, then why is he allowing it in the first place? I would go too far to say that everyone in this room has thought that at some point, either for yourself or for someone else. Seeing someone else go through something, it's like, man, I don't get it. Why is God allowing that? Look back at the verse, you see your answer. But that, Paul says, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He allows us to go through these times in order for us to grow in our trust, in our love, and our reliance on Him. That is what he wants. Listen to this. God does not call us to be stronger. God calls us to be weaker. Is that not contrary to everything that you hear in this world? But it's true. God calls us not necessarily to even be weaker, to acknowledge our weakness would probably be a better way to put it. He's not calling us to be stronger. He's calling us to acknowledge that He 
is stronger and that we are weak. You guys know the verse in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. It says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You know what I noticed here? It was fascinating. Paul did not only acknowledge his weakness, he celebrated it. That's a whole nother level. Come to a point where you acknowledge it, but then you actually celebrate it because you know that because you're weak, he is strong. That's where we experience God, and that's where we experience God's faithfulness. God does not call us to be stronger, but to acknowledge our weakness. So back to the main verse. It says, God is faithful and will not let us be tempted beyond our ability. So it is not talking of our ability. It's talking about God's faithfulness. That's what that's referring to. But Paul continues. He says, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape. Along with the temptation or the test, God will provide a way out. Who is it that's providing that? It's God, right? Again, this passage is focusing in on God's power, God's strength, God's control, God's ability, not ours. But even Paul talked about where his strength comes from. In 1 Corinthians 15.10, he says, But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that was within me. He did work. He did do what God called him to do, but he did it in God's strength and by God's grace. Peter also confirms this. In 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5, it says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to His great mercy, has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, verse 5, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. It is according to His great mercy. He causes us to be born again. It is by God's power that we are being guarded through faith. And that is the reason we are tempted or not tempted or tested to be our, our ability because He provides our ability and God's power and God's strength. He gives us the ability to do what? Handle? Overcome? No. To escape. Which means an egress, a way out, an exit. He provides a way for us to escape the pressures of the trials and temptations. Just like He provided a way for Noah to escape the flood, Abraham to escape the sacrificing of his own son, the Israelites to escape Egypt, and for you and me to escape the penalty of our sin through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He provides a way out, an escape. Why will he do that? The end of that verse, the end of verse 13, tells us why. And this is critical. This is, this is critical. It says that you may be able to endure it. What is he talking about? Endure means to to bear it, to withstand the test. God wants and will provide a way for us to get through. God is faithful and will be with you and will provide for you so that you can bear the weight of this test or this temptation so that You can endure the draw of this temptation and continue on. Endure. He promises you 
that you will get through it. God does not take us out is the point I want you to see. Doesn't take you out and remove the temptation, remove the test, but provides you a way to endure to go through with him by his strength. Not just in this life, not just the physically or the emotionally speaking, not just in the flesh, but more importantly, spiritually. Isn't that what God is most concerned about is our spirit, our soul, that we will live on past this life. So what Paul is saying here is that because God is faithful and will be with you and provide for you, that God will keep you from being overwhelmed and consumed by the trial and the temptation. He will keep you from fading away from him. You see, this verse is not about our ability to overcome tests. Not solely about our ability to overcome tests, but God's ability to keep us secure. A verse about eternally being eternally secure in Christ. That's what this verse is about. That's why the enemy tempts us. He tempts us to draw us away from God, away from love of God, and away from faith in God. Remember Job. All the tests and temptation that the enemy was permitted to unleash on Job, and his goal was to do what? That, that Job would curse God, that Job would turn away from God. That's what, that's what Satan wanted him to do. Same thing that he wants us to do. And what Paul is saying here is, do not worry, but because of God's strength, you will endure. He will not snatch you away. If you have been made new in Christ, adopted by God the Father, and fully put your faith and your trust in Him, no matter the temptation that comes your way, the test that comes your way, you will be His. Period. Because of how strong you are? No. Because of how strong He is. Because of how faithful you are? No. How faithful He is. Look at Jude 1, 24 and 25. It says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. Him who is able, you will want to know where ability and endure comes from. It comes from him. He will keep us from stumbling and he will present us blameless. You see, God alone saves. Our salvation has nothing to do with our good works or our effort, as we know, most of us know. The same goes for our security in Christ. It's not based on how good we are. It's based on how good God is. We are eternally secure. We will not lose our salvation based on our weakness. We will not lose our salvation based on a weak moment of something that we decide or don't decide. That's how good God is. That's how amazing His grace is. When we're His, we're His forever. I saw this quote from Steve Lawson. It says, In the Christian life, we will stumble and fall down many times in God's grace, but never fall out of His grace. Never. No temptation will overcome you. Not promising defeat of your trial. Not, prom not promising a defeat over your temptation. Not promising he will take care of the problem. He's not promising that he will take away it or heal a disease or allow you to keep your job or to keep your children from making bad decisions or anything, whatever it may be. He's not promising that. No, he's promising that you will not be snatched away from the enemy. That when you have a trial or tempted by your own sinful desires, that because of the Holy Spirit that is dwelling inside of you and inside of me, that we have been sealed for all eternity and will stand firm. 